okay so translation is the translation is the synthesis of protein uh, using multiple uh, type of its components ab yahan pe agar main kahun ke jab translation ho rahi hoti hai to wahan pe jo jo components involved hain unko agar main list down karu to main us pure system ko translation ya protein synthetic machinery ka naam de sakta hu now just think about what is required for translation uh, for 20 minus uh, building blocks are required for protein synthesis unki transportation ke liye hame different types ke 20 transfer rnas chahiye फिर राइबोसोम्स की जरूरत है एंड राइबोसोम्स आर मेड अप ऑफ राइबोसोमल आरएनए प्लस राइबोसोमल प्रोटीन्स फिर मैसेज कैरिंग आरएनए चाहिए व्हिच इज मैसेंजर आरएनए और इनके अलावा अभी हम कुछ जब प्रोसेस की बात करेंगे उसमें हमें न्यूमरस प्रोटीन्स चाहिए व्हिच आर रिस्पांसिबल टू ट्रांसपोर्ट डिफरेंट ट्रांसफर आरएनएस टू द साइट ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन फिर उसके बाद पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन एंड सो ऑन then uh, for the charge neutrality normally hame uh, cellular reactions ke liye cations chahiye hote hain like magnesium or calcium wagera then gtp as a source of uh, energy iski zarurat pesh aayegi so these are the preliminary requirements for any protein to be synthesized ab jab hum steps ki baat karenge we will uh, speak about three different steps for protein synthesis how the protein synthesis is going to start that is initiation how the polypeptide chain is going to elongate that is uh, uh, elongation and how it is going to be terminated so that is termination so whatever today i am going to talk that is actually what is happening in the prokaryotes eukaryotes mein processes same hote hain the only difference is the uh, number of proteins and the uh, other uh, factors required because of the difference in the eukaryotic messenger rna so hamara major focus as a generalized translation procedure ke upar rahega aur uh, precisely agar hum inke inko uh, jo hai translation ki baat kar rahe hain to then we are talking in prokaryotes okay so when we come up towards the initiation then uh, the basic uh, or the first step during translation is attachment of messenger rna with the ribosome and this attachment normally uh, occurs at the 5 prime end and this attachment is going to take place at AUG the very first translation codon AUG is a codon where from the uh, translation is going to start because हमने बात की हुई है कि पहला माइनर सेट मिथाइल नहीं होता है वो क्यों होता है उसकी भी अभी हम बात करेंगे और फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूक्लियोटाइड sequence of genetic code AUG downstream ki jab baat karenge so this is going to give us our reading frame AUG ke baad yahan pe next genetic code read kiya jayega CUC second amino acid ke liye phir uske baad next genetic code read kiya jayega CAG and so on so this is uh, what we call it as our uh, reading frame when we talk about initiation the very first step is attachment of smaller subunit of the ribosome with the messenger rna at 5 prime end now the question is how the smaller subunit gets attached with the messenger rna iska simple sa answer hai ki again think about the uh, ribosomal rna which is present in the smaller subunit that ribosomal rna has a 5 prime end and a 3 prime end so 3 prime end of the ribosomal rna I repeat again that three prime end of the ribosomal RNA has a sequence of nucleotides which is complementary or uh, with the sequence at five prime end of the messenger RNA. The three prime end of ribosomal RNA sequence has that is named as Shine Dalgarano sequence. Shine Dalgarano was a uh, was a scientist who for the first time described it. that how the ribosomal subunits they get attached or get, they get hold of the messenger rna so whenever you are asked that how these two uh, structures they get in contact there is going to be simply hydrogen bonding between 3 prime end of the ribosomal rna and 5 prime end of the messenger rna uske baad jab attachment ho gayi smaller subunit ki aage main abhi picture bhi iski dikhaunga then the next thing comes up the uh, transportation of very first 
ट्रांसफर आर एन ए कैरिंग द अमाइनो एसिड इस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के लिए uh, उसकी रीजन क्या है कि uh, जो स्मॉलर सब यूनिट है दैट इज बेसिकली अटैच विद दी ए यू जी कॉडोन ओवर की है सो उस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के लिए टू ब्रिंग द ट्रांसफर आर एन ए टू दाइबोसोम वी नीड सर्टन प्रोटीन्स विच आर नेम एज इनिशियशन फैक्टर्स इनिशियशन फैक्टर वन टू एंड थ्री की हम यहाँ पर बात करेंगे जब यू क्रियाट्स में इनिशियशन फैक्टर्स की बात की जाती है उनको हम ई फॉर यू क्रियाट्स और उसके बाद आई एफ साथ हमें अटैच कर देते हैं यू कैन सी हेयर ई आई एफ यहाँ पर हम प्रो क्रियाट्स में सिर्फ तीन इनिशियशन फैक्टर्स की बात करेंगे जबकि यू क्रियाट्स में देर आर मैनी इनिशियशन फैक्टर्स रिक्वायर्ड टू इनिशिएट द प्रोटीन सेंस सो If you look at this picture, this is our smaller ribosomal subunit, and you can see here that IF3 is already attached with it. So this IF3 is basically responsible for translation initiation. Once the translation is initiated, it will leave its position from the smaller ribosomal subunit. Uh, and at the same time this if3 is going to be involved towards the translation termination jab translation terminate ho rahi hogi us waqt jab ribosomal subunits ko separate karna hoga again this if3 is going to come so we can say that if3 has to perform two functions it is going to start the translation and then at the end of the translation it will be responsible to split the ribosomal subunit सो so, हमने तीन इनिशियशन फैक्टर्स की बात की इनिशियशन फैक्टर वन टू थ्री सो थ्री इज गोइंग टू बी लिंक्ड और अटैच विद द स्मॉलर राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट देन देयर कम्स द इनिशियशन फैक्टर वन आई एफ वन इट कम्स एंड इट बाइंड्स विद द स्मॉलर राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट एंड देन कम्स द आई एफ टू आई एफ टू इज एसोसिएटेड विद जी टी पी इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू कम अलोन इट इज एसोसिएटेड विद जी टी पी the reason for this gtp is that this if2 will be responsible to place the transfer rna at the first genetic code aug here agar aap yahan pe dekhen if2 came over here 5 prime messenger rna ke sath and ke sath bind kiya hai and after that it will find out where is the first aug sequence so there is the first aug sequence if2 has placed itself in the center of aug sequence you can see over here and then there comes up the first transfer rna carrying the methionine formylated methionine in this ki main abhi baat karunga then this formylated methionine carrying transfer rna comes over here and it binds with the if2 well not binds and if2 assist this transfer rna to be uh, to be like uh, positioned in such a way that anti codon and the codon they can base pair with each other once this base pairing is done then we can see that uh if2 is no more required then when if2 is no more required then that gtp which was associated with it here that is going to get hydrolyzed inorganic phosphate is released and gdp if2 gdp goes away at the same time when first transfer rna takes its position IF3 and IF1 are not required, so they leave the uh, smaller ribosomal subunit. And now you can see here that smaller subunit having the first transfer RNA at its position gets the larger ribosomal subunit, and this is the beginning of the translation. यहाँ तक कोई क्वेश्चन है तो पूछ लीजिए. Excuse me, sir. जी सर जो मैसेंजर आरएनए है उसने राइबोसोम के साथ जब अटैचमेंट की थी तो एयूजी ने राइबोसोम के अंदर जो राइबोसोमल आरएनए है उसके कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री जो था न्यूक्लियोटाइड उसके साथ हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग की थी फिर जब सर ट्रांसफर आरएनए जब लेकर आता है प्रोटीन को तो वो ट्रांसफर आर के एंटीकोडोन के साथ भी बॉन्डिंग करता है तो वो एक साथ दो तो दो इनके साथ कैसे कर लेता है मतलब आप... आप ये स्लाइड देखें मैंने दोबारा से स्लाइड शेयर की है मैंने ये बात की थी कि फाइव प्राइम एंड ऑफ मैसेंजर आरएनए के साथ बेस पेरिंग करते हैं और अगर आप उसकी डिटेल में जाएं तो वहाँ पे कोई भी ए यू जी कोडोन मौजूद नहीं है ए यू जी कोडोन इज इज लाइक कवर्ड बाय द स्मॉलर राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट लेकिन जो अटैचमेंट है 
ribosomal RNA key with the messenger RNA that it does not involve a UG codon. You can see here. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you. Welcome. Okay, so in prokaryotes, a call cheese you have to clear on each other. You may be happy to bat key for my latest methionine. So methionine is a normal amino acid uh, which is coded by a UG. Local genetic code me bat which table me that uh, methionine is uh, that amino acid which only carries one type of genetic code that is a UG. Like in prokaryotes, me job trans. Nation start on out yet to Hamare pass a modified uh, methionine. Uh, hum incorporate karte hai. Just go hum formulated methionine karte hai. Now, uh, just recall the charging of the transfer RNAs or attachment of amino acid with the transfer RNA. This is what hum transfer RNA ke topic me ki tia baha pi mene bata hai ka ki jitne hamare pass transfer RNA hai, utne hi hamare pass transfer RNA synthesis hai. So for this particular situation, when you start translation, we need a specific uh, transfer RNA synthetase chahiye, which is responsible to attach the methionine with a specific transfer RNA which will carry the formulated methionine. Once this attachment is done, then methionine gets the formyl group. Now what is the reason of this formylation? Look at these two structures. This is normal methionine or is me aapko amino acid ka structure yaad hai. One side has carb, uh, boxley group C double OH. The other side has amino group. Ab agar hum normal methionine ko leke chale aur uh, translation start karne ki koshish kare. There is possibility to make peptide bond on this side. Carboxylic group ki tarab bhi ban sakta hai aur amino group ki tarab bhi ban sakta hai. So nature has favored this method to ensure that the polypeptide growth hai, that takes place towards C-terminal. N-terminal amino group jo hai, that, uh, uh, that is going to be like blocked or uski blockage hum kaise karte hai, by the addition of formyl group. Once you add the formyl group, then the only point where the peptide bond can be made is the carboxylic group. So that is the reason we get at this point the formylated methionine and once the, uh, we get the next uh, uh, genetic uh, next amino acid and polypeptide is made then we are going to extend that polypeptide in one direction towards the end of translation the formylated methionine may or may not be part of the protein the functional protein okay ji clear so this slide has almost all the information which I just spoke. Then sir, uh, before we proceed, for, sir, okay. question is: the messenger RNA is not able to bind to it. At that time, the transfer and amino acid will be okay. It will be complementary. It will be because both will bind to each other. But at that time, the transfer RNA will be amino acid will be able to bind to each other. So that is. Now we talk about it. Now we talk about it. Next, our next question: How it happens? Okay. okay, so uh, coming to the structure of ribosome before we proceed further for extension or elongation, keep in mind within the ribosome we can identify three different positions. Jinko ham A, P, and E side kate. A side is the amino acyl side, or is koham acceptor side bhi kate. P side is peptidyl side, and E side is the exit side. Ye tino sites you hang ye basically uh, positioning of uh, the uh, um, of the transfer RNA kila as in could define kia again. Now, if you look at this particular picture, um, I can uh, focus on this 30th subunit. This green point, this blue colored, and this yellow colored. That means this is the exit E point. Yaha pe jo. Uh, transfer RNA मौजूद था, polypeptide मौजूद थी, वो यहाँ shift हो गई, यहाँ पे अब बन रहा है peptide bond, therefore we call it as peptidyl site, and the green site which is A site or uh, acceptor site, यहाँ पे नया transfer RNA आके enter होना है, तो इसलिए इसको हम A site कहते हैं, A, P and E site. अभी जो question आया है, 
दैट हाउ इट इज मेड पॉसिबल कि जो जेनेटिक कोड है उससे रेलिवेंट ट्रांसफर आर एन एंटर हो डिस्पाइट ऑफ द फैक्ट मैनी ट्रांसफर आर एन ए मे हैव बीन प्रेजेंट ओवर दियर सो वेन यू लुक एट द राइबोसोम स्ट्रक्चर ये स्मॉलर सब यूनिट है ये लार्जर सब यूनिट है वेन दे मेक अप द कम्प्लीट फंक्शनल राइबोसोम दिस इज हाउ इट लुक्स लाइक अब राइबोसोम में जो सेंट्रल पोजिशन है जहाँ पे थर्टी एस सब यूनिट और लाइक फिफ्टी एस सब यूनिट दे आर ज्वाइनिंग देर इज अ कैविटी अब ये वो पोजिशन है या कैविटी है जहाँ पे मैसेंजर आर एन ए मौजूद होता है लाइक मैसेंजर आर एन ए इज पासिंग थ्रू दिस कैविटी लाइक यू कैन सी ऑन दी पिक्चर अब हेयर एंड दिस ट्रांसफर आर एन ए केम ओवर हेयर एंड इट इज गोइंग टू बेस पेयर ना थिंक अबाउट दैट लूब्स ऑफ द ट्रांसफर आर एन ए अगर आपको याद है हमने एक बात की थी टी लूब की एक एंटीकोडोन लूब की एक डी लूब की Now this is the uh, uh, sequence of nucleotide on the transfer RNA, uh, in particular in the T loop as well as in the uh, anti-codon loop that interacts with the larger ribosomal subunit. Or larger ribosomal subunit में जो RNA होता है उसके साथ interaction होता है, and only that uh, transfer RNA is allowed to move in uh, the in the uh, that uh, particular site uh, a site with which the genetic code can base pair again uh, everything has to be decided by the ribosomal rna transfer rna interaction that this particular transfer rna is correct rna which will interact with the messenger rna so this is how it is decided that how this uh, next transfer rna is going to get entry into the राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट फॉर एलोंगेशन वंस वी आइडेंटिफाई जी मैंने यहाँ पे ये बात की है कि जैसे हमने स्मॉलर सब यूनिट के हवाले से बात की है ना कि स्मॉलर सब यूनिट आके मैसेजर आर एन ए के साथ अटैच होता है बिकॉज ऑफ अटैचमेंट बिटवीन राइबोसोमल आर एन ए एंड मैसेजर आर एन ए फाइव प्राइम एंड उसी तरह से ट्रांसफर आर एन ए के डिफरेंट लोब्स होते हैं दे हैव टू परफॉर्म डिफरेंट फंक्शन उन फंक्शन में एक फंक्शन ये भी है दैट कीपिंग इन व्यू द जेनेटिक कोड एंड एंटीकोडोन लार्जर राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट विल इंट्रैक्ट विद द Loops of the transfer RNA and will allow the specific transfer RNA to enter into this particular uh, A site of the ribosomal subunit. अब मैं इसकी डिटेल में नहीं जाना चाहता because इसकी डिटेल में जाऊंगा तो फिर हमें secondary tertiary structure और uh, of the ribosomal RNA उसकी बात करें uh, करेंगे then that, that makes the things more complicated. मैंने इसीलिए यहाँ पे Uh, उसकी बात नहीं की यू क्रियाटिक ट्रांसलेशन की डेलीबरेटली बात नहीं की बिकॉज उसमें uh, बेशुमार प्रोटीन्स इन्वॉल्व होती हैं टू परफॉर्म स्पेसिफिक फंक्शंस सो द फॉर यू द सिंपल आंसर इज द राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट प्रेजेंट इन द लार्जर राइबोसोमल सब यूनिट कंटेनिंग द राइबोसोमल आर एन ए इंट्रैक्ट विद द लोब्स ऑफ द ट्रांसफर आर एन एंड एंटी कोडोन और कोडोन डिसाइड्स विच ट्रांसफर आर एन ए विल टेक एंट्री एट दिस पर्टिकुलर ए पोजिशन ठीक है जी ओके सो देन वी टॉक अबाउट इलांगेशन वंस दू पोजिशन आर ऑक्यूपाइड दैट इज पी साइड एंड ए साइड देन देर इज रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन बट बिफोर गोइंग टू दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट इलांगेशन के लिए कौन सा ट्रांसफर आर एन ए आएगा इनिशिएशन के लिए तो हमने बात कर ली ना आई एफ टू ने इनिशिएट करवाया और उस आर एन ए को प्लेस किया अब यहाँ पे जो इलांगेशन फैक्टर एक और जो आपके क्वेश्चन का आंसर कॉन्टीन्यूटी में ही है हमारे पास तीन किस्म के इलांगेशन फैक्टर्स हैं विच विल प्ले रोल इन इलांगेशन ऑफ पॉलीपेप्टाइड एक को हम कहते हैं टी यू दूसरे को टी एस एंड थर्ड वन इज जी ई एफ टी यू मीन्स elongation factor temperature unstable elongation factor temperature stable and efg is called translocase because it needs a gtp therefore we call it as efg for its function 
Now, EFTU is responsible to transport a particular transfer RNA to the ribosome. It carries a GTP along with it. It binds with the 5' prime end of the transfer RNA. Now, this particular transfer RNA is carrying a phenyl alanine amino acid. And when it will come to the site, now look at this particular position. So here we have EFTU, GTP, then uh, at the point of entry, interaction of these uh, uh, lobes of the ribosome with the uh, larger ribosomal subunit RNA, and uh, this triple A genetic code interacting with the uh, anticodon, uh, the transfer RNA is offloaded here, EFTU and GTP is uh, released. And how they are released because GTP is hydrolyzed and is converted into GDP. So GTP EFTU remains associated with the transfer RNA, but when it has to get separate, phosphate is removed from GTP, it is converted into GDP. This EFTU carrying the GDP will be released out of the uh, out of the uh, nucleus for recycling. Uh, wo recycle ho EFT, you will get another GTP. Once we have two transfer RNAs, one at P site, the second one is at A site, the next step is peptide bond formation. This particular amino acid, if you can see a pink color dot, will be shifted to A site. Now A site, in the next picture, if you see after peptide bond formation, a site carries the two amino acid or P site ke upar kisi kisam ka koi amino acid maujood nahi hai. In pictures ko agar aap enlarged view mein dekhe, to this is how they look like. A peptide bond formation kaise hoti hai? Yahan pe aap dekh lijiye uh, that uh, this amino group of amino acid number two or at A site is going to do a nucleophilic attack on carboxylic group and then the peptide bond is made over here and p site now has the only transfer rna which is uh, like uh, uh, is uh, not carrying any kind of amino acid then comes yes, the ne next point how the peptide bond is made, where from the energy for peptide bond is uh, coming. Sir, 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 uh, from where the energy comes and which enzyme is involved in peptide bond formation. For a long time, it was believed that one of the protein present in the larger ribosomal subunit that has enzymatic activity, which is peptidyl transferase activity, and which is responsible for peptide bond formation. Ki. It was like for quite long, it was thought about it. But later on, when we uh, came up with the enzymatic function of rib, uh, of the RNA gene ko hum ribozyme kehte hain uske baad jab kuch research uh, ki gayi to it was figured out that this peptidyl transferase activity is basically associated with the RNA ribosomal RNA of the rib, uh, of the ribosomal subunit and uh, uh, the peptidyl transferase is not a protein enzyme this is a ribozyme just this is for the first time I'm uh, telling, otherwise uh, since last year I was uh, using the same uh, concept that one of the protein from the ribosomal subunit, larger subunit is responsible for peptidyl transferase activity. But now we have the reports uh, that this is a function of RNA and RNA is called as ribozyme. Once it happens, then the next step is movement of of this uh, messenger RNA uh, within the ribosome in such a way that the next genetic code 
enters into the ribosome. This is called as translocation. Now, if you talk about relatively, if you talk about that uh, ribosome moves over the messenger RNA or messenger RNA moves through the ribosome, the answer is messenger RNA moves through the ribosomes. And this is done by the third elongation factor, which we call EFG. Ka naam dete if you can see here, EFG bound with GTP is going to be converted into EFG GDP and hydrolysis se jo energy release hoki, that will be responsible for movement of messenger RNA through the ribosome. Yahan pe ek question ek baat mein drop kar gaya hon. Uh, how uh, the energy from where the energy comes for, for peptide bond formation. If you remember humne charging or transfer RNA ke wat ek ATP use kiya tha aur wahan pe maine kaha tha ki is ATP ka function aage chal ke bhi rahega. At that time the energy which was used to link this uh, this uh, amino acid with the transfer RNA at this particular point uske liye ek ATP use hua tha that energy is used to make the peptide bond. So we can say that ATP which was used for charging of the transfer RNA is going to be used again for making up the peptide bond. Okay, so let me show you this uh, picture, uh, this clip for like, uh, I don't know if it works here. It is a five to seven second clip. And you are supposed to focus on the movement of ribosome uh, sorry, on the movement of messenger RNA through the ribosome. At the same time, you have to focus on that this ribosome, this ribosome, is also some movement that is going on. Okay? Right or left, it is moving just like uh, jerk movement. That is how it is going to allow the transfer uh, this messenger RNA pass through it. Okay, so now I'm moving to this picture. This is just to let you know how the uh, translocation changes the E site, P site, and A site. Now, if you look at this first number one picture. This is the E site. The P site gets the first transfer RNA carrying uh, that uh, methionine for myelinated methionine. A site gets the second amino acid. You can see over here. And uh, then in the uh, second step over here, we move uh, this green colored transfer RNA, which was associated with P site. Now this is declared as E site. If you red color to hum A site carry, now this is declared as P site. Or pe neon nucleotide uh, uh, genetic code sequence center ho chuka hai, jisko hum carry A site. So basically, ho kya raha hai? Every P site, E site, uh, every P site will become E site after one amino acid addition every A site will become P site and then we will get new A site. So here you can see the green color is a transfer RNA is at E site, uh, red colored or maroon colored at P site. And now the, the purple color is at P site and A site is going to get some new transfer RNA that is going to uh, be responsible for movement of uh, messenger RNA through the ribosome and this maroon colored protein is basically the EFG which bounds uh, to the ribosome uh, for uh, um, translocation of uh, um, messenger RNA through the ribosome. So uh, now coming here, that one was A site in our previous picture. Now this is referred as B site. Or uh, Joe Mari P site thi, usko ap pe E site show kiya ja raha hai, and we get the new genetic code which is empty and this is the A site and here we are going to get the next transfer RNA here. You can see over here and now what is going to happen? This dipeptide is going to be shifted to A site and now there will be 
3 minus z and this b side will be converted into e side this a side will be converted into p side and the next genetic code is going to be named or labeled as a side in this way we uh, proceed further and this process keeps on going unless until there comes one of the nonsense or termination codons which are u a g u g a n and the third one i don't remember exactly so this is the summary of both the, the previous picture which i showed you just for your uh, information how the elongation takes place okay any question otherwise i'm going to move towards termination okay so how the uh, translation is terminated there are three nonsense or uh, stop codon uaa uag and uga if and when they come somewhere on the messenger rna this green colored uh, fragment is messenger rna there is e side there is p side and there is a side and then here is the growing polypeptide chain and we see that the uh, there is coming up any of the termination sequence that termination sequence cannot be recognized by any transfer rna rather there comes a, a factor which is called as rf or a release factor there are two different classes of release factors Re class one is uh, containing two release factors which are named as rf1 and rf2 rf1 identifies either uaa or uag and rf2 identifies uaa or uga stop codons rf1 release factor class 1 basically they don't need any gtp for uh, translation termination class 2 rfs will require a gtp for this kind of translation termination now if you look at this rf this is blue in color it came over here and it bound at the messenger rna here and now this is the indication that uh, uh, translation has to be terminated our translation termination hogi kaise that this uh, rf is going to bind with the messenger rna or waha pe is kism ki conformational change aayegi ki jo attachment hai between a smaller subunit larger sub a smaller subunit and messenger rna aur iske ilawa transfer rna aur messenger rna that is going to become uh, broken down and then uh, the protein jo hai, that is going to be released out of the larger ribosomal subunit then there will come back the initiation factor 3 which we have started with start thi. this initiation factor 3 will bind to the smaller ribosomal subunit and it will lead towards the uh, separation of smaller and larger ribosomal subunit in this way the translation will be terminated Eight point let me go back to the picture if I have yes this particular picture if you in larger ribosomal subunit there is a canal or cavity this is a cavity from where the polypeptide comes out during translation or SCRNP I have talked that its length which is the polypeptide which is grow in the cavity that can accommodate 40 to 50 amino acids once 40 to 50 amino acids are incorporated then we can see the growing polypeptide can uh, appear out of the larger ribosomal subunit as per cellular requirement either messenger rna can be translated once or it can be translated multiple times or it can be translated by multiple ribosomes at any given time when we see many ribosomes attached with a single messenger RNA during translation, we call that structure as polyribosome or polysome, as you can see in this picture. As a result of polyribosome or polysome, uh, the cells can get the huge quantity of that particular protein in a relatively shorter time. And not every messenger RNA is going to make up the polyribosome certain proteins when they required in larger quantities they can be translated quickly by polyribosome formation so this is all about translation